In this video, I'll go over the process of finding the low competition tech jobs, which you can use to 10x your chances of landing your dream tech job. My name is Anwar and I've been in the tech industry for over 15 years now. And I've worked in big tech names like Meta, Cisco, Wells Fargo. And during the course of all these years, I've not only got dozens of job offers for me, but I've also coached and mentored a lot of newcomers in finding their first jobs. So in this video, I'll go over different ways you can use to find the jobs which has 10 times lower competition and by applying to those low competition jobs you can significantly increase your odds of landing that job now before i go into what are those steps there are some kind of jobs which i want to stay away from because those jobs get a lot of competition and though you will be applying for hundreds of those roles your odds of actually landing the job will be very slim and those two things are first trying to apply for remote roles the remote roles have significantly decreased in the last one year and the competition has just soared for those. So if you are applying for just remote roles, unless you are a very seasoned, very experienced engineer, your chances of actually landing a job are pretty low. The second thing which I want you to stay away from is using LinkedIn Easy Apply. Of course, it is much easier to apply to those roles and it is very tempting to just find the roles which have easy apply button and you just click one button and you keep applying. But the drawback of that approach is that those jobs are getting hundreds of applicants. And again, unless you have a stellar profile, your odds of standing out against the crowd which is applying for those jobs is pretty slim. So these two are big no-nos, especially if you are trying to find some low competition jobs. Now, in terms of actual strategy of finding the low competition jobs, we'll be looking at different aspects. First, let's filter down on the location because this is a very important aspect, especially for non-remote roles. Now, in terms of location, we want to target the jobs, which are somewhat bigger markets, but not too big of a market. So when you look at the bigger metropolitan areas, which have a population of more than million people, you'll see that there are a lot of companies, of course, in these bigger metropolitan areas like New York, San Francisco, San Diego, but there are also a lot of candidates in these areas. So in terms of finding the low competition jobs, you should probably exclude these areas from your list. Now on the lower side, you will see there are some areas with less than 100,000 population. And these are usually smaller, low population density areas, which do not have a lot of jobs present. So you want to exclude these from your job search as well. And that leaves you in the middle ground where the population is somewhere around 100K to 1 million. And these are areas where there are some companies. So there is some competition, but there are not as many applicants especially for on-site jobs, as we see in the bigger metropolitan areas. So in terms of targeting the geography, you should be targeting this area. Even if you are currently living in a bigger metropolitan area, try to find a mid-sized metropolitan area within one to two hours commute from your location and then target the on-site jobs in that area. Your odds of landing a job there is much higher if you are applying for bigger metropolitan areas like New York, Chicago, San Francisco Bay Area, etc. Now, the second aspect which we have to look at is that of company size. A similar principle applies there as well. When we look at the distribution of company size, we'll see a spectrum like this. Now, on one end of the spectrum, we'll see some very big names, for example, Fangs. And on the other side of the spectrum, we'll see some very small startups with less than 10 people. And then in between, there are a lot of companies. Now, when we look at the number of people applying for these companies, we see a distribution like this. Where for the mid-sized companies, there are a lot of candidates. It might be surprising to you, but for very big names like Meta, Google, there are actually not a lot of applicants, especially the serious ones. And the reason is that a lot of people think that even if they apply, their odds of actually cracking the interview at Google, Meta are very low. Hence, there is relatively low competition. But since the interview process is very strict, though it is technically a low competition job, your odds of landing the job would still be slim. So in order to find the right low competition jobs, you should definitely exclude these mid-sized companies which have a lot of competition. You can also exclude these fangs which though technically have low competition but still your probability of getting that job is still very low. And the right area to focus your attention 
for finding these low competition jobs is these smaller companies. And especially if you combine this second approach with the first one, that you find some mid-sized metropolitan area and then find some startups which are under 10 people, these are some very low competition jobs. These companies which have less than 10 people do not have dedicated recruiters. They do not have enough budget to properly advertise their jobs. And job portals like LinkedIn rank their jobs very low. And because of all these reasons, the competition on these jobs is pretty slim. Now the third aspect which you should consider while finding these low competition jobs is that of the skill set needed for these jobs. Again, if we plot the spectrum of skills which were invented over the period of time, we'll see a distribution like this, where on one side of the spectrum, we have some recent technologies like AI, blockchain, cybersecurity, etc. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have legacy technologies. This is like C++, .NET, and even assembly programmers. And when we look at the distribution of applicants across these roles, we, we see a similar normal distribution. Where for the currently popular tech stacks, there is a lot of competition. But for the emerging technologies like AI, cybersecurity, there still isn't a lot of competition because universities still have not started teaching those to the extent which is needed to actually land a job. And hence the pool of applicants is still relatively small. So when you are trying to find the low competition jobs, the area you want to look at is this one and this one, the legacy technologies. Because in the present day, if you try to find a C++ developer, an assembly programmer, there are not a lot of people who can do that job. So this is still a good area to zoom into and you should definitely try to stay away from technology stacks which are currently popular like MERN and Python. Now the next aspect which you should consider to differentiate yourself for some low competition jobs is that of visa status or security clearance requirement. And the reason these two are clubbed together in the same category is that the security visa clearance is a lot of times dependent on your visa status. And it, these jobs are usually exclusively available to US citizens or at least US green card holders. Now, if you are a US citizen or have US green card, then you can definitely find some exclusive government tech jobs. And the best way to go about that is first, you try to get the highest level of security clearance you can get. Usually these security clearance process are very painful, lengthy, and costly. So you should be looking for jobs which sponsor that security clearance as a part of onboarding. And once you get that security clearance, it is usually valid for three to five years. And further down the line, you can also apply to other roles with that same security clearance. Another set of jobs which usually have lower competition is that of contract roles. The reason these jobs have relatively low competition is that when people are trying to get a job, they have different wants and needs they expect from a job. Now, one of them, of course, is the salary. But besides that, there are benefits like health insurance benefits, retirement benefits. Then there is job stability. People want to get jobs which are relatively stable and they can depend on that. And for a lot of people who do not have green cards or US citizenship, they also want visa sponsorship from the employer. And the reason these contract roles usually have lower competition is that though they provide the salary, but they do not provide the benefits, contract roles are not very stable and reliable because most contract jobs are six to 12 months contracts. And in a lot of cases, they do not even apply for your visa sponsorships. And because of all these reasons, contract roles usually have lower competition than full-time roles. And the best part is that even once your resume gets selected, the interview process for these contract roles is usually much more relaxed than it is for full-time roles. Because companies usually see these contract positions as sort of a stopgap arrangement, and hence they do not have a very stringent interview process for these. Now, as we have discussed the different aspects which you can consider 
to narrow your focus on jobs which usually have low competition, let's talk about some logistics on how you can find these jobs and what is the best way to apply for these. In terms of finding these jobs, there are a lot of niche job portals. And when you're trying to find jobs for specific skill set, specific security clearance, specific contract types, and specific company sizes, you can use these niche job portals at the time of finding and applying for these roles. Another big plus for these niche job portals is that sometimes these niche job portals have the jobs which other big popular job portals like LinkedIn do not have. For example, if you're trying to find contract roles, you can see that Dice.com and Indeed.com have a lot many contract positions than, for example, LinkedIn. If you are trying to apply for smaller company size, you can see that job portals like Wells Found have a lot of small startups which are posting their job requirements. And those jobs a lot of times are not found on LinkedIn. Same goes for government or high security clearance jobs. You can see there are a lot of those job openings on websites like tech.usajobs.gov, which exclusively just have those high clearance security government jobs. So by exploring these niche job portals, you can find some jobs which are not listed on these bigger job portals and which also have these criteria which I have gone through in this video and hence have very low competition. And by applying to those roles, you can significantly increase your odds of landing that job. The other thing which I want you to do is instead of just applying for all the roles which fulfill certain criteria, it's best to first define the criteria. And once you have that criteria established, then you find the top dream 100 companies you want to apply for. And if you're following the steps given in this video, then these could be some smaller companies in a mid-sized geographical area for a specific skill set which does not have a lot of supply. And depending on your visa status could be a high security clearance government job or some specific contract role. Once you have identified those dream 100 companies, then just narrow your focus on those 100 companies you should be able to understand what kind of jobs they have available. You should be able to understand what their interview process looks like. You can also do a little more research and understand that what are the recruiters or different decision makers in those companies and try to establish some sort of relationship with them through LinkedIn. And once you narrow down your focus to just 100 companies, and you give time and attention to not only learn a lot about those companies, but also to form some sort of a relationship with key decision makers in that company. And then you apply for those low competition jobs. Your odds of landing jobs will be at least 10 times higher than most of the candidates who just wake up in the morning, open LinkedIn jobs and see the first 10 to 20 easy apply jobs there and just apply that. If you try the approach which I have explained and outlined in this video, please keep me posted in the comments below what the outcome of that approach was. I've created a separate video on the topic of how you can effectively use LinkedIn to develop the relationship with the Dream 100 companies and actually develop a process so that you never again have to worry about finding another job throughout your tech career. The link for that should be somewhere here. Please check it out. I'm pretty sure if you like the content of this video, you'll definitely like the content of this video as well. Thank you so much for watching.